Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining Coleman Event as we paint this heart in hand. Our artist today is the talented Heather. She'll take you through how to make this sketch your very own masterpiece. But before we begin, let's take everything out of our paint kits. You want to make sure that everything is laying flat in front of you within arm's reach so that you can quickly and easily reach your paints, your cups, and your canvas. You want to go ahead, put some water in your cups, and put on your aprons. Now we've given you aprons because the type of paint we're working with is acrylic paint and it tends to dry quickly and permanently on fabrics. So you wanna go ahead and take a few moments and put on those aprons. Next, you're gonna open up your paint pot. Now we'll give you a little tip on how to get these pots open because they're sealed pretty tightly. You wanna hold the base with your right hand and open the left flap with your left hand. We'll show you one more time. Hold the base with your right, open the top left flap with your left hand and it'll come right on open. So go ahead and take a few moments, open up your paint pots, put on your aprons, Fill your cups with water and we'll begin in about 30 seconds. And now that we're all set up, Heather is going to show you how to make this beautiful heart and pain. And now don't worry if you messed up, it is perfectly fine. There is no such thing as messed up in art, so you can always go back and correct it. And she's just giving you a general blueprint and how to do it. But of course, we want you to take the paint and make it your own. So without further ado, here's Heather. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming to paint with me, even if it is virtually, uh, we're still going to have fun. So first, we're going to um, bring out the outline of our hand and the heart um, just by wetting our tiny brush in the water a little bit. And we're going to get our black paint and we're just going to trace around the line that's already there so that we don't lose the shape when we're painting it. So I'm just gonna follow the line around. This doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna follow it right on around what we have here. Some of this line won't even be visible when we're done. So I just wanna get a good shape of the hand, what's going on. We're just tracing right around the line that's already there for you. And if you mess up, it's okay, because this is the very start of a painting. And there's lots of time to make correction. When you're putting your paint on, typically, especially since we only have a little bit of time for this painting, <clears throat> we're going to apply it very thin and smooth layers. If you see any clumps of paint, you want to take and your brush and smooth those out so that you have a, just one flat line. And as you can see, my lines aren't perfect, but we're just going to gradually get the, all of the shape that's already there in black so that we can still see it later on. 
All right. So I know I might be moving pretty fast. Um, if for any reason that you are not at a point where I'm at, feel free to stop the recording and catch up to where I'm at and press play again so that we can all paint together. So now that we have the outline, um, we're going to go ahead and start painting in the hand. And the hand is just a bunch of different colors. So feel free to experiment with the colors that you use inside your hand. I'm going to switch brushes to the thicker uh, brush, spare tip, and I'm going to wet it just a tiny bit. And I'm going to take some colors and start putting them in the hand. I'm going to start with the blue. And I'm just going to pick where I want the blue color to go. And you can do wherever you would like the blue color to be. For the time being, try not to pick places to put the blue in the black near the black line because it's still wet. So it will smear into your blue coloring, which is fine. Not going to be the end of the day if we get some blue and black mixed together. It'll just make a darker blue. So yeah, we are adding our blue colors wherever we want. One to our hand or whatever color that you picked. All right, I think I got blue. I'm gonna take and rinse my brush. I'm going to go find the next color for our hand. And whatever color on the palette you want to use next. I think I'm going to use a green next. I'm going to get some green on my brush. And we're going to go around and pick where I want some green to be. And as you can see, there's really no wrong way to put this paint in this hand. This is very abstract and no way to mess this paint choice up. Adding green places. I'm not even looking at the picture a whole lot because I want mine to be original. Don't stress if your painting doesn't look exactly like mine or the picture. The most important part of this exercise is that you're giving your right side of your brain a chance to come out and work. Our right side of our brain is the side of our brain that's responsible for creativity. And a lot of times it doesn't get so much exercise in the society that we live in currently. So it's important to get that right brain muscle working, even if for a little bit a day. So I'm gonna take, I rinsed my brush, and I'm gonna take and get some red paint now. I'm just gonna come in and see where I would like the color red to go in my painting. I'm filling some red in. You can see that last stroke. I accidentally got some other color in the red. It's okay. I rinsed it. If you want to rinse it, you can. If you want that color to keep coming through, you can certainly do that too. I'm just going to pick places where I want the red to be by hand. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can. Pick anywhere you want it. If you want more red than green, then you can keep going with the red. If you want more blue, you can keep going with the blue. We're just picking colors and making them work. We might even paint over the color at a later point, but right now we're just having fun. 
them and fun adding color to the hand. All right, so I think I have enough red in there. Now I'm gonna go for another color. I think I'm gonna go for my yellow now. Like I said before, you can pick any color that you'd like. So I rinsed my brush and I blotted it on the napkin. I'm gonna dip my brush into the yellow paint. I'm gonna start adding yellow wherever I think I want the yellow. So yellow is going to be a color that is going to pick up every color around it. If you don't want that, just rub, brush your brush out, dab it on the napkin, and come back in to get clean yellow. But sometimes it's going to be it's going to pick up the color around it because it's still wet, and that's okay. That's what art is about: mixing color, experimenting with color on your canvas. I sometimes, when I'm at my canvas and I'm painting, I never really want to use the color straight out of the tube. I always mix a little other color in with it so that it's my own color. And you can do that here at the canvas that we're at too. Trying to get some good yellow in here. And you can certainly color color over some of the other colors that you already have. Because the painting is about layering on the color. And you'll see that as we progress through the painting. You'll see that. See, like now if I add yellow to the blue, it makes the green. I'm going to give our little dabs of paint on the inside for time to dry. And I'm going to go for the red again on my big brush. And I'm going to start filling in the heart, the color of the heart. I'm just going to paint that red. You could paint it whatever color you like on your palette. And right now, we're just sticking with. Um, the primary colors on our palette. In just a few moments, we're going to get into how to mix some colors and have a little bit of fun on our canvas. So let's just fill the red or whatever color that you have picked the heart in. If you pick up any of the black on your brush and you don't want the black on your brush, just go back into your cup of water, rinse your brush real well, and come back, dip it in the red, and there's no more black paint to carry around with the red. Okay. And we're just coloring in the heart right now. And this is just the first layer on our painting. So a lot of the brush strokes that you're seeing right now, don't worry about. Um, probably going to be covered over with the next layer. But if you wanted to like make fun designs with your brush strokes, you could. Little swirlies, you could echo the heart shape. You do all kinds of stuff with your paint. That's why it's fun to paint because the possibilities are endless. All right, I'm gonna rinse the red off. We've got our basic art colored in. And definitely feel free to pause the video anytime that you need to catch up with me so we can all paint together. And while I'm giving the hand that we painted a little bit of time to dry, I'm gonna start on the background. Um, in the background, you can see is very multicolored, so you can't mess this up. I just want you to make it your own. I'm gonna start by making an orange, which is yellow and red mixed together. I'm gonna see if I can scoot this over so that you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna take a little bit of red and pull a lot of yellow in. 
my canvas, my palette, I mean. And you can see there, I'm getting a little bit of orange color. I'm going to start the orange on the back of the painting, on our background, I mean. And I'm just going to apply some color to the back. This is our first layer. While I'm doing the first layer in the background, I also like to paint in some good energy and creative thoughts in the background. So I'm going to just have fun a little bit with this background. I can paint some hearts. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be covered right up. You can write the word love. You can write whatever words that you might want to know that are in your painting. You want to do this background very thin coats of paint so that it dries and when we're ready to proceed. I'm mixing up some more orange. I'll put some more orange there. I'm going to bring some yellow in. And I can mix the color right on the canvas as well. See that that's really fun too. And it's kind of <clears throat> interesting to watch the colors mix right before your eyes. And here we have a yellow orange coming out. And as you can see, I'm using very little paint on my brush. Almost, it's almost dry and I can still color with it and it's gonna dry very fast. I'm gonna not even clean my brush. I'm gonna dip into the red paint. I'm gonna do some hearts over here in the red. I'm going to do a heart up here. Maybe you want to give yourself some words of um, wisdom. Maybe you want to write self-love. As a reminder that Self-love is very important. Telling someone you love them is very important too. Showing love is very important. So all of these things are important. And yeah, this is just of having fun kind of expressing yourself in the background. You can get whatever color that you want and just have fun in the back. You can see how when you take colors and you draw them through other colors, how they start to change. I like to do spirals. You can do whatever shapes that you'd like. Do some diamonds, circles, whatever you want to put in the background is all going to be covered up later on. This is the fun part, just being very free and creative, not being afraid to mess up and having fun with your canvas. This looks nothing like the final project. 
and that's fine because this is the bottom layer. And you can just fill your canvas with color. I'm gonna dip in my white. I'm going to draw a heart here too, right over my yellow. And I can come back in with that. And we're just having fun, filling our canvas with color. We're not even worrying that it doesn't look good. It's not perfect. Just want to see colors interact with each other. Get a feel for your brush. And have fun. We're just doodling all over our canvas. This isn't erased. You can put color wherever. You can blot some color just by dabbing your paintbrush onto the canvas. See how it's collecting the color, different colors. You dab it around. All right, so now we have our own masterpiece. This is the bottom layer, which I like to call a freedom layer. There's no way to mess that up at all. So we've given some love to our bottom layer. Let's start bringing in some more color to bring out the bottom layer. Um, so I'm gonna mix some more yellow and red to make that orange, cause that's a pretty dominant color. And I'm just gonna start putting some orange in different places. And it's okay that that bottom layer is blending in with this background. It's gonna give your painting texture and something interesting for the eye to look at. It's perfectly fine. We're gonna go over the bottom layer again and again once it has a little time to dry just to show you how layering painting can look. Yeah, it is getting a little muddy. That's what happens when the paint's not really dry when we start mixing a lot. I'm gonna come in with my yellow. I'm gonna just paint in up here. You can paint up here with whatever color you think. And you see how that's creating that cool effect because the yellow was picking up the other paint that was already there. Come in with the yellow. It's going to turn to green because there's green on the bottom. And that's pretty cool. We're not really worry that the colors are blending. It's really fun to do that at the canvas. Anyway, I'm going to mix a blue and a red together and you'll get a purple color. Because that's one color that we haven't really touched on yet in this painting. So mixing red and blue together, you're gonna to get a purple. And this was the purple that I got when I mix red and blue together. And you'll see, you can make it bluer by adding more blue or like more violet by adding more red. I'm just gonna incorporate some of this color into the hand places where I think purple should live. And you definitely do the same. Wherever you think purple should be, go ahead and put some purple in your hand too. I'll we'll give our background a little time to dry. 
come in and fill in some more of these holes in with purple. And you can paint right over some of the color that you have there. It's not permanent as far as whatever you decide to do once the paint dries, you can do all over again. That's your, your beginning, your never ending beginning. You can just keep on adding purple. Everywhere we think purple should go. You can even, if you think you need to cover over some of the other color with the purple, you can definitely do that. Just get a feel of where you want purple to be in your painting. I'm gonna add a little bit more red to my purple. Come up here, I have a darker red. I'm just gonna start painting in the background and kind of smearing all of the color around. And that kind of gives us an interesting bottom layer of color for our background for our hand. So you can basically, as we're going around the back, pick up any color. You don't even need to wash your brush and start putting color down on your canvas. And you can see when you start mixing the color in together, you start creating different colors, purples, blues, reds. I'm just picking color and I'm adding it to the bottom layer of our canvas in the background. I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to get probably some yellow. I'm just going to come in this top area with the yellow. It's okay that we paint over the black. With the yellow, we can clean everything up later. If you pick up black when you're yellow, you can wash your brush. Really, really good. Blot it on the napkin and come back in with more yellow. And then you get yellow and you're getting a whole bunch of other colors that are already on the bottom and it's making neat effects for you in the back. There's no way to mess this up, guys. There's no way at all. Clean my brush, I'm gonna make some more purple. This time I want it to be a little bit more blue. So I'm only gonna add a tiny bit of red, a tiny bit. You can see how different that color is. We're just gonna go around. Get all of our canvas covered in paint. Just picking color and putting it there. This is just a layer in our painting. This colors will probably not be visible when we're done, unless you want them to be. Unless when you say you get this layer done and you like how it looks, you don't want to paint a layer on top of it. You don't have to. Remember, this is your creative masterpiece. And I'm just here to guide you. Let's get all these different colors. See how it's all blending together to make new colors. I am painting around the hand a little carefully. If you make that black line disappear, it's okay. We'll bring it back. You can paint a new black in later. 
we'll touch up everything when we're almost done. So I'm just grabbing some random color off of the palette, some red, rinse my brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit of green down here at the bottom. We're just putting some color block on our canvas. Don't be discouraged if you don't like how it looks now because we are just getting started. Every painting goes through a process. It doesn't just come off the brush and look phenomenal. The layering process. Come up here with some yellow. See how when you layer the color, it uh, starts to be thicker. You want to switch colors and you want the color to be true. Always remember to wash your brush in between colors, but you don't have to. I'm gonna come on in with some more purple down here in the corner. We're basically getting this bottom layer all covered up with whatever colors that you like. This is your painting. And we want you to express yourself freely when painting, try new things when painting, mix new colors when painting, and most importantly, don't be afraid to mess up. You can't, you absolutely can't mess up painting because as soon as that color dries, if you don't like it, you can go right back over it and make it something totally different. That's why I like to paint. All right. So everybody's canvas should be pretty much completely colored in. If you're not completely colored in and you want to take a moment to pause the video and catch up, feel free to do that so we can paint together. So on the hand here, we are missing a few colors. There's a lighter purple and then there is a lighter blue. So I'm going to take the blue and the white and mix them together to make a lighter blue. And you can make whatever color that you like. I'm gonna show you the light blue by mixing the blue and the white together. Now you can make different colors of light blue simply by adding less blue to the white. The less blue you add to the white, the more lighter the shade will be. And here is our blue, we did with white and blue mixed together. And we're just gonna come in and figure out where we want this light blue to go. And it might pick up some of the color that you already had down, it's okay. Cause that's what paint does. Don't be worried if you're pulling another color into it. We're just gonna pick everywhere we want our little light blue to live. If you see an area that might have a lot of dark color, you wanna liven it up with a lighter color. Adding contrast to the art. It uh, makes your eye wanna follow all around the canvas when you add different interesting aspects of color next to each other. So we are mixing this light blue by the blue and white together. 
I'm putting in our light blue color in our hand. Kind of go around and see where you want your light blue to be, where you don't want it to be. If you like where it is, great. If you figure it out later that you don't like where it is and you want to change it, you can easily paint right over it after it's dried. So don't worry if you get to a point where you don't like where you put one of these colors. We can easily change that later on. Okay, I think I got all in my light blue. There's also a light purple in the hand. We can make a light purple as well. What we're gonna do, make a light purple, is mix some blue and red together to make the purple. And then add in a tiny, tiny bit of white. And you'll see that color start to change to a lighter purple. And you can play with your colors until you get the right color by adding more white or more blue or more red. I'm gonna come in with the light purple, kind of just go over any place I see white with the light purple or whatever color you decided to pick next. I really want you to make this your own so that you're happy and proud of it and you can hang it up later and really think about the fun time that you had painting. Maybe you'll want to do that again. All right, so we've got some light purple in our painting. And as you can see, I'm kind of covering up some of the other colors. And that's about all the light purple that I want. Well, I got the light purple though. I do want to go and add some light purple into the background of our painting here. So we're going to mix some more light purple by mixing the red and the blue and then adding a touch of white. I'm going to go around and just start painting in some color blocks over the color that's already there. And you can see as you're doing your second layer, you can see that the paint is just becoming a little bit more easier to cover. It's got the bottom layer of paint to grip to. I'm gonna rinse off my light purple. I'm gonna go grab some blue, start putting that down. And yeah, I'm gonna try and blend them in together. Just to give the eye a little bit more something interesting to look at. You can see in the second layer that you don't see as much brush strokes coming around. It's about layering everything up. I'm gonna let that area dry a little bit. That's the key to letting things dry if you don't want them to blend in together. I'm going to get a red. Come down here in this corner, make this corner a little red. Just a little bit. Another fun technique I like to do is to almost have all of the paint off the brush and the brush is dry. And then you can just wiggle it around the canvas and it drops ever so slightly a little bit of color onto the color that's there. And that's a technique called dry brushing. It kind of gives an added texture. 
And it allows you to mix your color. Another technique we can use is to just dip whatever um, brush you're using into the water without rinsing it. And then you can just apply a watered down color right over the color that you have. And you can see how that effect works. It's called washing. Just wash a layer of paint on. Basically, what we're going to be doing for the background is just playing around with the colors that we have here. Mixing them, seeing what we like, what we don't like. Experimenting. What colors look good next to each other? What colors create contrast next to each other? The dry brushing technique does definitely come in handy when you're blending the color in to one another. You can put whatever colors that you want. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. We're just picking colors and blending them in to the back of the canvas. And you see how I'm just swishing the color back and forth, pushing it in to the canvas. We want to we'll start painting on a really good thick layer of color. What we're doing is just building up the layers so that our paint doesn't look as thin. We have texture. What's going on in our painting? There's no wrong way to add the color. you wanted to do all one color in the background, you certainly could. I'm just showing you how to achieve the effect that the artist achieved in the painting that you picked. We're just playing around with color. You can grab whatever color on your canvas. Just keep putting color down. Don't forget about your other possible colors by mixing them, ones that we gave you together. I feel like I want to get more purple in my painting. I'm going to mix the red and the blue together to make purple. And here's the purple, red and blue together, making purple. I'm just putting that on. Another color. You can even let some of that bottom layer pop through you'd like. This gives more texture to your painting. We're just covering the back with color. We're going to give, once we have the second color on the back. We're going to give this a little time to dry. I'm going to concentrate on our hand and just kind of see where things are at once we come back to do some of the background color. If you see some of your color is not the color that you like, it's getting muddy. 
you see this color that I'm working with now, it's kind of gray. You don't like it. We can come back and paint over that. Okay, so let's give our background a little time to dry. We're gonna come in and pay a little attention to the hand that we have here. We left that heart kind of hanging. I want to come back and show you how to make the heart look like the picture. Let's put another coat of red. You can just go all over the heart with red just to solidify the brightness of the red. You can see that. It's not as sheer going on the second coat. We're gonna just keep on going with the red. We have all of the heart painted again with the red. I just pulled some color from another area, but look how easy that was to clean up. See, it's not hard to make a mistake in paint, but it's so not hard, also not hard to correct it. So while the paint is still wet, I'm going to grab some of the white. Come in to make the shiny parts of the heart. So it looks like there's a line there. And you can mix it right in with the red paint that's still wet. A little one there. The more paint that you add, the whiter it's going to be. And you can just keep wherever you want your Heart to shine, you can put your white. And if you don't like where you put your white, I purposely put white where I didn't want it so that I can show you how easy it is to correct it. You can just smear that away into the red. Very easily like it was never there. So if you see an area of your white that you don't like, you can easily correct that. I smeared it away. I'm going to come in with some red and we're going to just go right over it like it never was even there. You can further hide that the white was ever there once this dries. And go over it. Wait, we have our white. And we still have some white in our hand, little areas that don't have color. Plus I think that I just need to kind of bring the hand together. So I'm going to make a blue green color by mixing the blue and the green together. Just gonna kind of come in and maybe give this hand a little bit of unity, bring all the colors together on the outside. Just in some areas. Just going around where I want some areas to have the same color. And you can see how there's colors blending, colors are disappearing, new colors are appearing. It's a lot of fun. There's no wrong way to do this. We're just giving our back layer a little bit of time to dry. While we're waiting for that to dry, 
I also like to bring back in the shape of the hand. So we kind of lost that when we colored in everything. I'm gonna take a bit of white on my brush and I'm just gonna outline it in white. You can see the hand shape coming back into focus. It's okay if the white picks up some of the color that's around it. That gives it more character. Let's see how the white is come, making the hand stand out from what's going on behind it. You can also see that the white is picking up the color underneath, which gives it a cool effect. If you don't want that effect, you can just wash your brush out, dab it on your paper towel really, really well, go back into your white, and you'll see how bright it comes through again. I am going for the blended look on this piece. So I'm going to keep color, not real white, but a version of white, a lighter color. And we're just going all around the hand with the white. It's almost like it's making our hand glow. Give it another layer of texture to our painting. While we're waiting for the rest of our background to dry, I'm going to come in and clean up the border of our hand with the black again. And we're just going to take our little brush, dip it in some a little bit of water, and then a little bit of black. And we're going to start outlining and defining this heart that's in the hand. Okay, it's not a race. Just take your time, follow the shape that is here of the heart. Okay, if you mess up, you can always go back and touch this up. And as we put the black around the heart, you can see that it's standing out again. And the black is really contrasting with the red so that it makes it pop off the hand and really catch your eye. If you make a mistake with your black line, we can fix it and I'll show you how before we're done. We're gonna do the same thing for our hand. I'm gonna follow the shape of the hand. And our white paint is still a little wet, it's okay. We can just rinse our brush and go back in with black. It's gonna be black again. And we're just following the contour of the hand. Just to bring back the hand shape. If you guys need to pause the video to catch up so that we're all painting together, feel free to do that anytime. I can't see where you're at.
Just following the shape of the line all the way around the hand. Be careful where you lay your hand. If you need to lay on the canvas, put your hand on the canvas like I just did, because your paint might still be wet. It will get on your hand. It'll wash off. We're just going to define the fingers here. We have our hand back in focus, contrasting with our background. I think the background is going to be dry, so we can put on our final layer of paint, and we can do that really quick because we have all of those good layers of paint underneath. I'm just going to come in and start just adding. I mixed a little bit of blue with a little bit of white. I'm just going to come in and start playing with some color, just keeping my brush very light with paint. And you can just dry brush the paint right on what's there currently. And you'll get all kinds of new colors on your canvas. I'm going to mix a little bit of red and white together with a little bit of the purple that was already there. You'll see a nice pink color. You can put pink in your canvas. I don't, at this stage of the game, I'm not really going to clean my brush between colors because it's gonna make all kinds of new colors in the background. And that's what we're going for. I want to experiment with different colors coming in, blending them, and making it your own. If you don't like a color you made, you can go right over it with another color and keep repeating that process until you find a color you like. Paint is very forgiving. And it's easy to change once it dries. You can go right over it. And it won't even matter what was there before. As you can see, I'm picking up paint from the canvas just with the dry brush and I'm spreading it around. And my paint brush marks are disappearing from that top layer. You can do that all around the canvas with different colors just by wisping the color on with a dry brush. I try to repeat the colors that are in the picture all around the canvas so that the eye likes to wander through the canvas a little bit easier than if you just didn't really repeat the color that was throughout the canvas. It draws your eye all around, so it gives your viewer something to be, to focus on 
hold their attention for your work of art so that they can see all of it. You can see how the colors are gradually going in and becoming their own color all around the canvas. When you just grab paint and put it on. If you see that your paint is disappearing as you're painting, that just means that area needs to dry. So go ahead and move on to a different area while we wait for that one to dry. I think my painting needs a little bit more purple. So I'm gonna make some more purple again, mixing the red and the blue. I'm gonna bring the purple back down here in this corner. Mixing with the green, you can see the kind of cool colors it's making. I'm gonna let this little corner dry. I'm gonna come back to the top corner. I'd like to make that a little bit more yellow. You can see how that paint's dry, so the yellow is going to cover that right up. It's not going to really pull any color. Also, going to add in a little bit of white right here on the canvas. And I'll show you how easy it is to mix the color right on the canvas. And you have a lighter yellow. That'll create contrast with that purple at the top. And you can even blend them in together with the dry brush technique that we talked about gradually. You can dip your brush in a little bit of water. You can get a wash of that yellow color. Just kind of Go back and forth and you'll see those brush strokes disappearing. You don't want to see the brush strokes. I think I'm going to come in with a bit of red up here. Just to kind of bring your eye up with the red into the yellow. You can pick whatever colors that are speaking to you. Put on your canvas wherever you want. Just a lot of fun to experiment, putting colors next to colors, mixing colors with other colors. You never know what you're going to get. And we are I'm gonna put this top layer on this color, on this background, and then you will have your masterpiece. You can keep adding layer of color after color until you get it exactly the way you want it. I encourage you to experiment even after we're done so that you can see what you like to do <clears throat> when you create. You can see as we're layering the color, and blending them together, that the colors get a little bit more rich and a little less sheer with every layer. So imagine what your painting would look like at about four or five layers in. See, I'm gonna put some light blue back over here. So please. Don't be afraid to go back tomorrow or the next day and play with color while you have all the paint left. You have plenty of paint so that you can go back in and experiment, fix stuff that you don't like until the masterpiece in front of you is perfectly yours.
And as you can see, mine isn't exactly like the painting we sent, but copying art isn't as fun as creating your own. I hope that you have experienced that for yourself today. We hope that you come and paint with us again soon. And we hope that you love your painting that you created here with us today. And if you don't, wait for it to dry and paint over it. There's no end of possibilities that you can achieve with this little bit of paint for your painting. You can see how just that fast I changed that bright corner and I'm changing it into a darker corner. There's no wrong way to do it. Just whatever is speaking with you at the time. Whatever paint you have left on your palette, you want to use that up. However you want to do your background. Lots of fun to create. Different effects, different colors. Experiment with different brush strokes in the background and make it your own. I'm going to take some black paint. I'm going to go in my corners. And some of the corners, maybe this one too. Kind of just thinly put that on. I'll give it a little bit of our arts here finish. You can try this if you'd like. Or you can just stick with no black some of the areas. If it's too black, you can add a color to make it not so black. I'm gonna add some blue. You can just keep experimenting with the color that you have. See how the black and the blue mixed together made like a gray blue? There's so many possibilities and colors that you can make for this picture. So I hope that you do that. You find all the colors that you might like. So glad that we could paint today together. I hope that your masterpiece is exactly how you want it when you're done. I hope you're proud of it and can hang it in your room and really look at it and remember the fun that you had creating your masterpiece. And we can do this all day, but I'm probably going to stop. I just want to show you all the different ways to experiment with color for your background and how you can't really mess it up. So please post your pictures later, tag us in it, let us know what you came up with. Thanks for painting with me today.